Hello everyone and welcome to section 6.3 for geometry. We're doing the section on proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So in the previous section, if you guys watched, 6.2 was about the, the properties of a parallelogram. So if we know it's, uh, an object is a parallelogram, we know it has certain characteristics. This is exactly the opposite. In this section, we see a quadrilateral we look at it, we observe it, and we try to determine if it's parallelogram based on what we observe, okay? So think about going the opposite direction. Before, we knew that something was a parallelogram. So let me just kind of draw this out so you have a visual. Before, we knew it was a parallelogram, and then we knew that there were certain properties. This time, in this section, okay, we know that there are certain properties and we want to know if it leads us to understand if it is a parallelogram, if I can draw it. Hmm. There we go. Had to activate it. There we go. Okay. So uh, this is ugly, so I'm erasing it. But I just wanted to give you a visual of what we're determining in this section. Okay. So if we want to prove that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, that's the method of showing that an uh a shape, a quadrilateral, is a parallelogram, okay? So this, all of these are different methods for determining if an object is, uh, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, okay? First method, prove that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So if we determine that these are parallel and these are parallel, then we know it's a parallelogram. And why? What's the source? What's the reason why? The reason is that's the definition of a parallelogram. So we would know that it is a parallelogram based on that that is the definition of a parallelogram, okay? All right, moving on to the next one. Prove that if we want to, uh, another way to prove that uh, an object, a quadrilateral, is a parallelogram is to prove that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, okay? The source, the converse of parallel sides theorem, okay? The parallel uh, congruent sides theorem states that if an object's a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. This is the exact opposite. If we know that the, uh, the quadrilateral has opposite sides congruent, then we know it's a parallelogram, okay? So if we can prove, or sorry, if we are given that the opposite sides are congruent, then we know it is a parallelogram, okay? All of these are going in that order. So you'll see for the next one, it's converse of parallelogram consecutive angle theorem, okay? The method. So if we want to see a quadri uh, prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then we should prove that an angle is supplementary to both of its consecutive angles. So here, if we show that, um, for example, we'll label this one, two, and three over here. So if we can prove that angle one plus angle two equals 180, or that angle one plus angle three, three equals 180. We have to have both of those. Those are both consecutive. Remember, consecutive means one after the other. Okay, so those are consecutive angles, also known as supplementary, because they have to add up to 180 if it's a parallelogram. So if we see quadrilateral and those consecutive angles add up to 180, as demonstrated there, then we know it's a parallelogram. All right, what's this one about? We're looking at the diagram here, and we see that we have these two angles are congruent. Uh, let me try that again. Too much. So these two angles are congruent, and these two angles are congruent. So if we know that those angles are congruent, okay, we can prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram by proving that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. What theorem is that? Well, as you can probably pick up on the pattern, it's going to be converse of all the patterns of all the theorems we learned last time. So this is the converse of parallelogram opposite angles theorem. This, my pencil's wearing out. Okay, opposite angles theorem. And that's all there is to it. These are converse. Remember, we're going in reverse. I don't know how many times I said it, but the more times I say it, hopefully it will stick. Okay. Now, what's this diagram showing? It's showing that it's bisected. The two diagonals of the parallelogram are bisected. So this is clearly the converse of parallelogram, oops, 
parallelogram diagonals theorem diagonals theorem okay the diagonals theorem parallelogram diagonals theorem without the converse states that if we know something's parallelogram then its diagonals are bisected so if we know a shape has dissected by diagonals did i say that right a shape has bisected diagonals i think i said dissected diagonals okay so dissected dang it i said it again bisected diagonals then we know it's a parallelogram okay last one uh, prove that one pair of opposite sides is congruent and parallel. So we can prove, we don't have to know uh, both pairs are congruent, and we don't have to know that both pairs of sides, sorry, both sides are, hold on, it's not, there we go, are uh, parallel. We don't need to know that. We just need to know that one pair is opposite, uh, one pair of opposite sides is congruent and parallel, okay? And that is the converse of parallelogram. Uh, let me just double check. I think it's, I, I want to get the order opposite and parallel. Okay, so that would be converse of parallelogram, parallelogram opposite and parallel theorem. And I don't think there's actual names for these theorems, but it's just showing that you can prove going backwards with these. Okay, your book might even have like theorem 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, something like that. Um, I'm more a fan of if you're doing a proof, just explaining why you know. The important thing here is this is converse, so going backwards from having the properties and saying that it's a parallelogram. Okay, that's the important part to me. So we have one example here. Uh, this is kind of limited in terms of um, non-proof uh, examples, and I'll try to do some more proofs for you guys in future videos. But for this one, it's just kind of giving the basics. For what value of x must a, b, c, d be, uh, I think, to be a parallelogram? As you can see here, this is already bisected. Okay, That's split into two equal parts. So this also needs to be bisected if it's going to be a parallelogram. So we have to set that these two are equal to each other. So 3x is equal to 4x minus 5. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And I'm going to add simultaneously 5 to both sides. So we get 5 equals 4x minus 3x combined x. So x equals 5 is our answer. We could find the length easy enough if it was asking for it. We just put in 5, we'd get 15 there. 4 times 5 is 20 minus 5 is 15. So that's all there is for section 6.3. Hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing you next time. If you need some proofs, let me know in a comment and I'll do some proofs for you also. Take care.